Hello and thanks for watching video 8 of Palo Alto Video Training Series. In this video, uh, we are going to talk about network address translation or port address translation and uh, how we can set them up on uh, Palo Alto firewalls and how we can provide internet access um, for internal users through NAT um, and how we can make our servers or resources accessible from outside um, again through NAT or, or PAT. So let's get started. Um, just talking about our uh, diagram again, we have our Windows 2012 server here <coughs> which is serving uh, IIS. Um, we have our Palo Alto firewall inside that side. And we have our PC as, as a router. Um, basically, through our AC, we have shared, if you remember, we've shared the wireless or wired internet connection and made it available for this IP address range. So that means if uh, the internal range try to access internet, uh, it won't be able to because that interface won't allow uh, sharing with that range. So we'll have to do a, an IP address translation uh, for this range. So it, when it's going out, it will be translated to a different range and uh, then it will have internet access. So once what, what we've done in the past, just log into our firewall again. <coughs> what we've done in the previous um, uh, video, we've created a translation rule, which uh, I'm going to talk about it now, to provide basic internet access functionality for our internal users, and we call it global NAT. So if we click on this, so you can see that we've created a global NAT. This IP version four uh, is coming from inside zone, so whatever packet is coming from inside zone and the destination is outside zone, which would be internet, uh, on any service, any IP address, it needs to be translated to the interface IP address, outside interface IP address. So, for example, when this computer or this Windows 2008 is trying to um, access internet, that 192.168.1.2 IP address will be translated to 192.168.137.10 and it will go out and come back in. Just to quickly show you what are the differences between uh, NAT and uh, PAT. So, first thing I want to show you is uh, static NAT. Um, Static NAT is uh, basically a creation of a translation between two IP addresses, one internal and one external. <laughs> and the way it works is your internal IP address, so this, this is just a sample show that I downloaded from internet to show you. Um, there will be an internal IP address, whether uh, it is 192.168 or 72, whatever, whatever the IP address. This is just an example there. Internal IP address, it will be translated on the router to an external or firewall to an external IP address. And when the response comes back on that public IP address, it will be translated back to the original IP address and sent back to the host again. So this is a one-to-one -one NAT or static NAT. We have another concept of dynamic NAT or dynamic net network translation. Uh, and the way that it works is uh, we can have a range of internal and a range of external IP addresses. 
and each one can be translated to, to another one. So uh, this can be translated to that, that can be translated to that. So we have a pool available. So on this side, we can have one or more. On the other side, we can again have one, one or more, and each uh, can be translated uh, to whatever is available. So that is called the idea of dynamic NAT. We have another concept which is called port address translation. And the difference between port address translation and network address translation is it works based on the port numbers. And it is a very good feature specifically for uh, uh, places that you don't have enough uh, uh, public IP addresses available. You could use port address translation to translate number of IP addresses to one. IP address, and that is basically pretty much what we are doing with the global rule that we created over here. And the way that it works is you will have a range of IP address. For this particular example, we will have two internal IP addresses. When they try to go out, they will be translated to one IP address. So 10.1.1.10 and the source port is 3.001, it will be translated to this public IP address, source port 2.001, and try to access internet, whatever the outside address is. At the same time, the second IP address uh, with a different source port number will try to access a different outside uh, um, server. And it will be translated to the same IP address, but the source port is different. So that's how it uh, keeps the sessions with uh, basically separating them on different ports and, and uh, uh, managing that that way. So the response when the response from this server is coming back to port 2002, it will understand that this is a request for this server and when. The response from this server comes back to 2001, it understands that this is a request for this server and <laughs> direct it to the right server. So that's, that's about the translation. So what we have here is, is a, a kind of port address translation or path. As you can see, all of our internal, uh, so we are, we are saying anything on the inside interface will be translated to a single IP address on the outside interface, and that's it. So that will help us to uh, provide internet access. So we have other features like dynamic IP. As I said, you could have a pool of IP addresses. I could say that 192.168.137 20, 192.168.137.30, and 192.168.137.40. So we could basically translate our uh, internal IP addresses to a range of different. So if we apply this anytime any computer on the inside network, whether it is this server or the workstation that we have here, it will be translated to one of these IP addresses based on the availability. So that's that's the kind of dynamic net that uh, I just explained. We also have the option of static IP, which is static net when I explained. Uh, and uh, that's basically <coughs> translating to one single IP address. I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to create another one with the static IP to show you how it works. So if we go back to our Windows server, try to log in. I just want to make sure that we do have uh, Web 
server running on this IIS server is running or not. Okay, and we do have IIS server running on this server. So what we are doing, we are going to do, we are going to uh, basically create static NAT. So this is our IIS server over here. We are going to create static NAT and map the IP address of this server to another IP address, let's call it 192.168.137.20 and then try to access IIS from external uh, computer, which would be this one, on that IP address, on the public IP address. So we just create static NAT and uh, from inside to outside and the service, you could define a service, you could just leave it at least, you could just uh, create a static NAT for, for the whole services or you could uh, separate it based on the service. So if you separate it based on the service, you could possibly use one IP address for, for multiple uh, different services. But if you translate one IP address um, to the other, with all services, um, you, you have no flexibility there. So source IP address is 192.168.1.2 is our uh, IIS server over there. And the translated packet is going to be static NAT and 192.168.137.20. So just click on OK. Sorry, one more thing that I forgot to mention. When you make this bidirectional, it works both ways. So from here to from inside to outside, outside to inside. So that's that's pretty much what we've done. Before um, we test and try to access these uh, public IP address from outside. This is this is our external IP address. So our web server, which is located on the internal network, should be accessible from outside. So before we do this, uh, we are supposed to uh, create a policy and make sure that that server is, is available on the external interface. So we just go back to our security and create Another rule, we call it IIS access from outside. So this time traffic is coming from outside any source and destination is inside. Destination address is going to be 192.168.137.20. Thirty seven twenty, which is our uh, external IP address. You go to services and again say HTTP, hello, and log it. Click on OK and commit change. So as you can see, there is a problem there. So it's rule global NAT shadows rule static NAT. So we'll have to go back to NAT and move this one up. So we will do this translation first and then global NAT and commit the change. So now we've done this, um, we're going to give it a try. So from my PC, from this one, which is an external PC to, and this is our internal network, so it's an external PC, we should try and access 192.168.137.20 and see if it is accessible. Okay. 
so we just open a tab 192.168.137.20 and sure enough you can see we have access to our IIS server um, through its uh, public IP address which is uh, um, available from outside. So that's how it, how network uh, translation works. Uh, if you have a web server on DMZ or, or uh, SFTP or FTP server on DMZ, you could just create a uh, network address translation and make it available from outside. And from inside, obviously, you could do port address translation to uh, provide access to external resources. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll uh, be with you in the next videos.